What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. Today I'm gonna to be doing a Christmas q and I posted a picture on Instagram and asked you guys to hashtag Ask Paul and there's over a thousand comments, so I cannot believe and I'm completely overwhelmed with the response. So thank you everyone who has submitted a question in. I'm gonna jump in the Lamborghini, I'm gonna go for a drive, I'm gonna sit in all sorts of different seats in that car and we're gonna try and rattle through a few questions that you guys have asked. We're gonna try and go through some general questions that have been asked numerous times and we're gonna to touch upon one final announcement. So make sure that you're watching this video until the end because it is pretty damn exciting. What are the things to expect when driving a Lamborghini? Adrenaline pumping, your back's gonna get sweaty. I think you're just gonna get sweaty in general, not because of the air conditioning. The air, the air con is fine, it's just this car keeps you on the edge. So massive adrenaline rush, sweaty back, and a massive smile on your face. I think there's no better brand than Lamborghini that puts a smile on your face when you drive it. And this car, the way that it looks, the red, the Army Tricks exhaust system, it just puts a massive smile on my face. What has been my best adventure in 2015? And I have been absolutely so lucky to be able to have joined Tim in April uh, for Top Marks and the drive back on his Euro trip. Um, heading off to Dubai for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, going back to Monaco to stay at Seb's house for a couple of weeks in October and November, which was unbelievable. Then New York, um, Munich with Ford Mustang, there was Cologne with Ford, there was Detroit with Ford. This year, I don't know what's happened this year, like, and I hope, hopefully I'm going to be touching upon all of the things in a lot more detail, all of the trips, all of the experiences that I've had, um, and how I'm going to take that forward into 2016. But what has been the best adventure? I think overall, as a supercar package, the top marks and the Euro trip in those two weeks was absolutely insane. We saw Lewis Hamilton's McLaren P1 get delivered. We saw a Lamborghini Veneno in Dusseldorf. We had fantastic drives across the mountain with 10 other amazing supercars, and I had the Right. and it was an amazing amazing car I learned so much about driving I learned so much about that car it was a really important trip and I had so much fun with the people that I was with so I think that's the best adventure that I've had this year who do I love to prank the most Sam Seb or Tim now whilst we were out in Monaco there was a bit of a prank war that happened and this happened <laughs> Seb dyed my hair. Um, however, I got him back, I wrapped the twizzy, I also pranked Sam. I think overall, I didn't actually get to prank Tim, so maybe that's on the cards. So if I was answering this question sensibly, I'd probably say Tim, because he's next. However, from the experience that I've had of pranking both Sam and Seb, I think I preferred to prank Sam over the duration of the day. Just pushing his buttons and winding him up about things that he just has and that he is normally quite particular about. So I think overall, Sam is who I like to prank the most. If I had to buy a family car that was still fun, easy to modify, and still had supercar performance. Now, I think six months ago I may have said the Ferrari FF because it's four seats, loads of space. Since being in it, what an amazing car. I think if we were talking limitless budget, I probably would say a Ferrari FF or even the facelift one or whatever Ferrari you're doing with an FF. But keeping it realistic, I would say a 2015 Audi RS6. They look amazing, they've got so much road presence, you can spec them up and have all of the gadgets inside, super comfortable, and I think anyone that's driven an RS6, I haven't, or anyone that owns an RS6, and I know a couple of RS6 owners, and they say it's one of the best cars that they've ever owned. It just has everything, it has the power, it has the performance, it has a fantastic gearbox, but it's an estate car, and it's easily tunable. You can get like 700, 750 brake horsepower. So Audi RS6. I suppose not the most comfiest seat in this car. However, who has the most annoying habit on road trips? Now, this is quite difficult because I don't actually spend that much time with Sam, Tim and Seb when we're on the road trips because they're in their each car, so we're driving together. However, I have had Seb as a passenger seat in France and I've watched him be passenger seats in the Jaguar and in the Porsche. And I think Seb's habit of falling asleep as a passenger in a supercar isn't annoying, it's quite funny. 
So when he fell asleep in the GT4, which I don't know how he did, he must have been very tired because the suspension of that race car for the road is very, very stiff. He fell asleep, so I decided to pull up alongside him at about half 11 at night on the motorway, driving into Leon, open the valves, downshift a couple of times and accelerate, which did wake him up. So Seb, remember that? <laughs> Kylie Jenner or a LaFerrari? Now I know exactly how this answer would go if Sam was doing this Q&A and answering the questions. I would say LaFerrari. So this question is very topical for this time of year because it is Christmas. So for those that celebrate Christmas and for those that don't celebrate Christmas, it is a time of year to chill out, relax, the end of the year, celebrate the new year coming in and just have a lot of fun, have all of your family around and just spend time chilling out and enjoying everyone else's company. So what do I want for Christmas? It's a very, very difficult question. I think if you asked me this 10 years ago, if you asked me this 15 years ago, I would have given you a massive, massive list of everything that I wanted, probably mainly from the Argos catalogue. Um, however, I don't particularly want anything materialistic this Christmas. I know this is probably going to sound quite cliche, but for me, um, having spent quite a lot of time away from my family and not seeing my family and spending time with them, I think this year in particular, I do just want to spend a week or two weeks or a week and a half, however long it is, just with my family, spending as much time with them as possible, eating a lot of food, drinking a lot of drink, non-alcoholic, and potentially alcoholic. <laughs> but just having the Christmas vibes in and around the house and everywhere that we go, that is what I think Christmas is all about. What is the best and worst car that I drove in 2015? I've been so lucky to be able to drive and get behind the wheel of some of the cars that I have been able to do this year. And I suppose hopefully next year, once I turn 25, car insurance will be a little easier for me to get behind the wheel of some really cool stuff. The worst car that I've driven, not ah, so difficult. I'd have to say the BMW i3, because even though it is a cool car and it is a very, very cool concept with very, very good technology in, the range is just a little bit too small. And the fact that it is a pure electric car, you have to charge it up. I did have some issues with that, trying to charge it up in my house. You basically, you need a garage and a plug socket for it to sit in overnight. So I suppose the BMW i3, the best car that I've driven, it has to be the 2015 smart car. It is the most fun I've ever had in a car. The turning circle was hilarious. It was amazing. Driving into central London was an absolute dream. And everything about that car was a lot of fun. It even gave you the little game about trying to get your eco score up. I know that I have driven the LaFerrari thanks to Prindeville, but yes, it is by far the best car that I have driven. But because <laughs> it was for sale for two million pounds, and as you probably saw from the uh, video as well, I was kind of pooing myself a little bit. I think overall I was most comfortable and had the most fun in the smart car. That's weird. So if two manufacturers could merge together to create one supercar, what two manufacturers would I want to create this car? I think I would have to say two interesting ones i'd say bugatti because their technology to create insane performance like with the veyron when it first came out like with the super sport and the vitesse and now with the chiron that is going to come out they just take things to the next level so i have to have bugatti in there because they are just incredible at what they do and then you kind of want some flair because i kind of feel like the bugatti veyron it has some traditional looks that it needs to continue on with the theme um so i would probably say something like Pagani, if Pagani could design the body and then the Bugatti would build the engine and put it into that car and build all of the technology that is involved with that and merge Pagani and Bugatti together to create a Bugatti Zonda. That is the dream. Okay, I haven't got my handbrake up my bottom now. Um, let's move on to quickfire. Dubai or Monaco? 
I hate doing quick fire because there's always a reason for my answer, but I would have to say Monaco. I prefer Monaco um, based on I have spent more time in Monaco. Um, but the seven days I had in Dubai were absolutely fantastic. The weather was incredible in November. The cars were amazing. The people were amazing. The whole atmosphere is very, very cool, but it's kind of quite busy and it's still a bit of a building site. There's a lot of buildings being built. There's a lot of buildings that have already been built and look amazing. And I think in five to 10 years time, I'm sure Dubai are gonna carry on and continue to build, but uh, I think I prefer Monaco. I think it's kind of quieter and it's, I don't know, there's something about Monaco that I prefer to Dubai. So that concludes the end of this Christmas q and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, I tried to change it up a little bit by uh, mixing in some questions whilst I was driving, in this seat, in the middle with this handbrake, um, on my bottom, and in this seat. Like, let me know um, how you think I can spice up these Q&As because I love doing them and I love obviously receiving all of the questions that you guys send me and I want to do a lot more and I have waited to answer probably the hottest topic on Supercars of London at the moment and that is about a wing or a spoiler on the Lamborghini. So I teased you with the DMC box on Twitter. I'm not entirely sure whether I posted it on Instagram. Um, however, um, as you can probably tell, I am at SB Race Engineering and I don't know what percent of the questions were, have you got a wing, what's in the DMC box, you should get a spoiler. I suppose I should probably show you something. So, this is uh, quite a spontaneous way of, um, I suppose, announcing that the modification to my car has happened. Ladies and gentlemen, my true blood, Lamborghini, has now had a modification and I've waited ages for it. DMC sent this wing before I went to Dubai. It arrived whilst I was in Dubai um, and thankfully SB Race Engineering have given me a little Christmas present and managed to slot me in, fit me in and the wing has been fitted to my car. There's gonna be a full video of the fitment that is gonna be coming over the next couple of days. Barry at SB Race Engineering fitted it absolutely perfectly, but as you can see, oh, almost fell over. I have now got a wing on my Lamborghini. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and very spontaneous announcement and reveal of the DMC wing. Like I said, there is gonna be a full video and a lot more videos coming to Supercars of London, including the running costs of this beast. So thank you for watching and I truly appreciate all of your support. Have a very, very good Christmas and I look forward to seeing all of your tweets and Instagram, comments and likes of YouTube and everything. I kind of get lost at the end of these outros now because I talk about things so much as I am now. But ladies and gentlemen, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon.